are you getting a lot of support here from the public, you think? I would say in my 33-year career, this is probably the best public support we've ever gotten. Workers are taking a beating right now, and it's time for workers to stand up and be paid what they deserve. Hello, and welcome to the Citizenship Show. My name is Clinton. This week's episode centers around an interview with the Canada Post Union. I'm sure many of us Canadians have heard about the ongoing strike here at Christmas time going on in Canada. Uh, it's late November at the time I'm filming this video. So I actually have a really cool interview. I went down to the line. Uh, they were picketing down on the old island highway here in Parksville. So I talked to some of the strikers off camera and then I actually had a cool interview with the union representative that you're going to hear in a moment here. Let's hear what the Union had to say about this strike. Yeah, my name is Shane Lorenz. I'm the president of the Central Island East Local of CUPW. I was the president of the local in one of our last labor disputes right. for two or three years. I've been a postal worker for 33 years. You're okay to have this up on YouTube and uh, distribute it on the internet? Absolutely. Aside from kind of the, the costs and the wage increases, what are really the workers asking for in this strike? I think everybody knows inflation has been uh, out of control for the last several years, and we've constantly been getting 2% wage increases for basically the last decade. Mm. And inflation has been higher than that every year of, of that, of our contract. And so we've actually fallen behind. And in the last decade, we actually haven't had a pay raise, but that's really not the main issue here. The main issue uh, for postal workers is the corporation uh, manufacturing a crisis. Is there a failure of imagination? I mean, wh what is the ultimate solution here? Let's say that these negotiations come to a conclusion and people get back at work. It doesn't solve your bigger problem that you're losing money. And we're actually not in a crisis. We're not losing $748 million as they're advertising uh, in the media. For starters, Canada Post loses a mind-boggling amount of money each year, down $748 million last year alone. The year before that, $548 million, minus $490, minus $779, minus $153, minus $276. We've lost $3 billion in the last five years. Mail volumes have declined by almost 70% over the last 20 years, and we're losing in the parcel business because we're not competitive. So we've got to put forward a, a plan and a proposal that we can afford and will allow us to grow and then invest more and more. But right now, we're not in that position. The losses that they're showing are just expenditures. And when you're, ex uh, when you're spending billions of dollars on new electric trucks and new plants that use more automation, you're not really improving the service to anybody. Uh, it's us, the workers, that actually provide the service, and yet they don't want to spend a dime on us to make our life better, but they think they're making everybody's life better by spending billions of dollars on infrastructure, which I actually see harming the worker instead of improving our work life. And so the, that's really the main sticking point for us as the union it's not really the money, it's the safety of our working conditions and them wanting to eliminate our jobs with automation. We need to sit and look at the future with Cub W, and so far they've been more interested in trying to protect the past that sadly doesn't exist anymore. Like the milkman a generation or more ago, the days of daily visits from your friendly letter carrier will soon seem like a quaint notion from another era. Tell me, tell me more about that, because I was talking with just a couple of guys on the line casually, and that was really that the, the job seems to be changing. Can you give me some practical examples of kind of the changes that, that they're looking to make and how that impacts workers? A, a typical day for a carrier is that you go in, you sort your mail, you pull your mail from your case, you organize it the way you want to organize it, and then you go out and deliver it. The new vision that Canada Post has is that one person will sort multiple routes, like four or five routes uh, per day, and they will pull the mail, and then they will just hand it off to, to the carrier. The carrier will come in and be out on the street for the entire day. The problem with that is it's just too much wear and tear on the body, for starters, especially on someone who's, who's on foot, which a lot of the carriers on the island still are. Uh, but also, the carrier themselves know their routes, and they know what to look for. And like, for instance, 
Um, if you're pulling the mail of your own route, you remember, hey, Joe, Joe's got a parcel today. I've got mail for Joe. You see the mail for Joe. Joe's got a parcel. It's in your head because you've seen it. When someone else does the work for you and just hands it off to you, you have no idea what's in there. You have no idea what you have for anybody. There's nothing to trigger your brain to, you know, to, to know what to look for when you're out there. Bleecker Street, Dogtown. It is a major health and safety concern because every carrier knows the dangers on their own routes, such as dogs or bad stairs sure, yeah. or just anything that's out there in the neighborhood that they're aware of, they know about. When you've got a new person going into a neighborhood every day and a different person, there's all kinds of variables and dangers they're not aware of. So it just escalates the health and safety concerns through the roof. And it, it seems like from, again, the conversations I was having that they're trying to put you guys in silos and kind of taking away the, you know, the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The variety of the job. Yes, exactly. It will just, and I guess on paper, it might look like they can save some money by doing that. But when you factor in the health and safety concerns, and I, and I think at the end of the day, the injury rate will skyrocket. My oh man. It will actually cost them far more money because now you're going to have people off on injuries. You're going to have people off on long-term injuries. Um, those costs, whether they're paid for by a third-party provider or not, are still going to come back to Canada Post as an expense to them. So in the long run, I don't see them uh, saving any money at all. It's going to make the job miserable it's going to make people look elsewhere for a job. And like you say, uh, it, it sort of uh, defeats the whole camaraderie that we have as carriers. We go into the depot, we know our people, we know our job, we work together. You know, we, we spend an hour or two in the depot in the morning getting our routes prepared to go out, and then we go out and deliver. So, there, you know, there's, there's a lot of that being lost as well. It's, it's just... Uh, the individualizing of, of the work will just be lost completely. It'll just be like we're just robots. We just walk in, grab our mail, walk out the door, and go do your work. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about how the uh, mail carriers and the Postal Service integrates into the community. And, you know, kind of, can you give, uh, as your own experience in the profession, how the profession has changed and how you guys are really kind of community actors in a large piece? There's no contact with an, uh, an aluminum box and a key. We want to have a community life. Yeah, I agree. We totally are part of the community. And, and I think we proved that yesterday. Yesterday we had government check day mm. and we're on strike and we've uh, we've always agreed uh, to come in and deliver the checks for pensioners and the, and alike uh, to get their checks when we're out on strike because we don't expect anyone to suffer because we're having a labor dispute. And we've always done that. And we feel like we are an important part of the community. I don't I don't want us to lose that. I, I, I think, uh, and that's the other thing about us being, you know, thrown on a different route every day. You build up relationships with people, right? People know when you're coming. They know who you are. Sometimes you have uh, special agreements with customers. They're going away. Hey, my neighbor will take my mail, whatever. There's there's always situations where the, where the carrier on the route knows and only they know. So when you take the individuality out of the job, um, I think you're you're also making the customer service aspect far worse as well. Merry Christmas. Mail on Sunday. Oops. <laughs> if I can talk quickly just about like the equipment. So they're changing a lot of the pieces of equipment that we use within the depot. Um, they say that they're 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 more safe, but they're not. Uh, the the like for instance the the racks that we use now they're called bread racks. We use multi-level bread racks to organize our parcels for our routes. They're taking those away and they're giving us just one big uh, you know one big container cart that you can push where everything just basically gets dumped into one container and then you don't have a place to organize these things anymore. So what's happening most of the time is a lot of the carriers are just laying all their parcels out on the ground. So now you've got people working off the floor. So now you've got increased back injuries, increased knee injuries. Lift with your lower back in a jerking, twisting motion. Ah! I, again, I don't see, they're, they're telling us that they take up less space, but when you actually measure them and see the, the, the capacity that they can hold, 
and the you know because every parcel comes in a different size they really don't hold anymore so now you need multiple carts for each route and they actually at the end of the day end up taking more room up so there's no benefit at all to the worker Canada Post is saying they need to save space because they want to, they want the depots to take up less room but the buildings are already here and so I think we're fine using what we already have Email, telephones, fax machines, FedEx, Telex, <laughs> Telegrams, Holograms. All right, it's true. Of course nobody needs mail. What do you, what do you think you're so clever figuring that one out? The number of letters Canadians send to each other has been in free fall. Here's what the last 10 looked like. Minus 6.1%, minus 6.8%, minus 8.8%, and it just keeps dropping. By last year, Canada Post was delivering only about two billion letters. There's a lot of people who say with email and Facebook and all this stuff, what's the purpose of even having investments into mail and physical things? So can you just kind of close off? Why would why should the government continue to invest in Catapost and why is it important to have postal workers in the country? That is a very good question. So a lot of people think that Canada Post is just about mail and it's really not anymore. Uh, parcels is the wave of the future. People are ordering things from home. I think the biggest part of this piece is not so much the urban centers because, uh, you know, there's, there's many, many courier companies that work in the urban centers. Canada is a massive country with a lot of small towns mm -hmm. and every small town has a post office. And we are the last mile courier company of Canada. So what I mean by that is it doesn't matter who you ordered from or what you ordered, what company it's coming with. At the end of the day, in a small town, it's going to be delivered by Canada Post. So if you're ordering something from Costco.ca and it comes on with UPS and UPS doesn't deliver to small town Canada, I won't use a name, but there's thousands, there's thousands of them. Uh, then it will be it will get a Canada Post label at some point and Canada Post will deliver it that last few miles. We are a very important part of this country. We have the biggest delivery network in Canada and every town has a post office. So I think this is Canada Post opportunity to actually and this is what the union has brought forward for Canada Post not just to look so narrow mindedly at just parcels, but expand the business in small town Canada, where the banks are pulling out and closing down, we should bring back postal banking because we had postal banking up until the late 60s and the banks lobbied to have that discontinued. But now we have farmers that live in small town Canada that are driving an hour into a big town to do banking when the post office is literally five minutes away. So now they can go to the post office, pick up their parcel and do their banking. And that's something we've been presenting on the table for the, at least the last decade, and it's just quickly been thrown away every time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Yeah, appreciate yeah. you. I really do try to be non-biased on this channel and I respect all viewpoints, but hell, I'm pro worker. Why? Because I am a worker. I've been a cashier. I've been a dishwasher. I've worked a lot of jobs in my career. And I now I'm a small business owner, YouTuber, whatever this kind of content creator space. And anyway, I'm with you guys. And I want to say that. And I really do think that a lot of the problems in society today are because people just aren't getting paid what they're valued. Where are you all in these negotiations? How far apart are you from getting people back at work? Let's stand up for workers' rights. I'm kind of sick of this whole narrative in the news that let's just get them back to work. I get that it's Christmas, okay? But let's not forget, Christmas is more than boxes and bags, ribbons and tags, as the Grinch taught us, right? Christmas is about coming together with family members and eating and drinking and being merry with those that we love. I do want to make a larger video about privatization of government services because I feel like it's a really hot topic. You know, I think what's happening at CBC with the whole defund the CBC campaign is very much linked to what is happening with Canada Post and their revenue issues and this whole notion that we have to have government services competing with the private sector and that they have to be profitable and I don't know it's just it seems like a very large topic that I do want to go more in depth I got to be honest with you you make a pretty strong case 
if you like this kind of content and you want to subscribe, you can do so right here on YouTube. My name is Clinton. This has been the Citizenship Show. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.